When Christians read the New Testament, they can easily get the impression that Jesus and Paul taught significantly different things. Jesus goes about teaching the kingdom of God, a phrase which hardly ever occurs in Paul. Paul famously taught justification by faith, and we get only a little flicker of that at one point in Jesus' teaching. So people say, oh dear, they seem to be teaching different things. How can this be? Now, one uh, illustration which might help us to grasp this initially is that the relationship between Jesus and Paul is not like that between somebody who used to teach a course in a college and now a new professor who comes in and teaches what is supposed to be the same course, because actually the relationship of Jesus and Paul isn't like that at all. Jesus is more like somebody who writes a great piece of music, and Paul is like the person who teaches folk to sing it, so that if Paul starts to recompose the music, that shows he's not being loyal to the original composer at all. But illustrations like that can take us so far, they can help us resist the apparent conclusion of a radically different gospel. But we need to go a bit deeper. What Jesus is saying throughout his public career in both his teaching and his deeds is that this is the time for the scriptures to be fulfilled and that Israel's God, the world's creator, is doing the new thing which he'd always promised. And somehow it's focused on Jesus himself and his actions and his words and what is going to happen to him at the end of his public career in his forthcoming death and the resurrection, which he was trying to explain to the disciples, but they usually didn't get it at all. And so then when we look at Paul, we see that actually he is taking the whole story of Jesus Jesus as a whole. And when he says that the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried, and was raised from the dead according to the scriptures, and that he is now at the right hand of the Father, and that he is now the Lord of the world, this is substantially the same message about the fulfillment of the ancient scriptures, about that fulfillment bringing about the kingdom of God, and about it doing so through the death and resurrection of Jesus. So Jesus is embodying his message, his gospel, as well as articulating it and explaining it. But Paul, who sees the end from the beginning, can put it together as a package and talk about Jesus and his death and his resurrection and the meaning of those events, and as a result, can talk in some spectacular passages like 1 Corinthians 15, of the way in which now those scriptures have come together and the kingdom of God has indeed been launched, as Jesus said it was being launched, on earth as in heaven. So the attempt to pull Jesus and Paul apart really fails, and it fails for another reason as well, and that is that Jesus announced his message only to the Jewish people, to the people in that very narrow little strip of country of territory in which he went about doing what he did and preaching his message. But Paul believed it was his vocation to take the message about Jesus, this whole package of Jesus' proclamation, his kingdom bringing, his death, his resurrection and ascension. It was Paul's vocation to take that message to the ends of the earth, at least symbolically, to take it right across the Roman world, through the lands over which Caesar was Lord, in order to say no, Jesus is now Lord. And so when Paul is articulating the message, he naturally speaks into a much wider world, the world of Roman Empire, the world of Greek culture and religion, so that he doesn't translate the message so that it means something different, but he expresses it and applies it. And also he picks up all sorts of good and interesting ideas from elsewhere in the culture, so that, as he says, we take every thought captive to obey the Messiah. But it is the same message. Jesus announced it and did it. And Paul, looking back at what Jesus said and did, says, yes, Paul announces that this Jesus is the Lord of the world who ultimately calls all human beings to believing allegiance, to live under his lordship, and to make that lordship known in the whole creation.